When it comes to World War II, most would say a sword and a bow aren't exactly the best weapons of choice when defending against machine guns and tanks. However, for John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill, nicknamed Mad Jack, there was nothing he'd rather arm himself with than those two items, and potentially a set of bagpipes to go along with them. Born into an old Oxfordshire family, Churchill graduated from the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in 1926. Before his World War II fame, he worked as an editor of a Nairobi newspaper, a model, and a movie extra, appearing in The Thief of Baghdad due to his expertise with a bow. That same talent with archery took him to Oslo, Norway, where he shot for Britain during the World Championships in 1939. By this time, of course, Europe was fast approaching World War II. Mad Jack had left the army after 10 years of service, but happily returned to it because of the, to quote him, country having gotten into a jam in my absence. By May 1940, Mad Jack was the second command of an infantry company. He always marched into battle with a bow and arrows and his trusty basket-hilted claymore by his side. Despite these weapons being wildly outdated, Churchill defended them, saying, In my opinion, any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. His medieval weaponry wasn't just for decoration, either. During the 1940 Battle of Dunkirk, in which 300,000 troops became stranded on beaches and had to be evacuated, Churchill struck down a German soldier with a well-placed arrow. In 1941, Mad Jack volunteered for the aptly named Operation Archery, an attack on a German garrison in Norway in which he led two companies during the battle. During this particular battle, he and his company were in charge of taking out the German batteries on Malo Island. On the vessel bearing him to shore, Churchill is noted as having stood at the front playing his bagpipes to the tune of The March of the Cameron Men. When they landed, he dropped the pipes and charged ahead of the rest of his men with his sword in hand. His sword also served him well later in 1943. At the time, Mad Jack was a commanding officer in Salerno when his troops were forced into line fighting. Churchill went ahead of his soldiers, wielding his sword, leaping out at German sentries from the darkness, blade held high. All told, he took 42 prisoners that night with the help of just one other companion and, of course, his trusty sword. This was in line with his philosophy on fighting the Germans, which he described after capturing the 42. I maintain that as long as you tell a German loudly and clearly what to do, if you are senior to him, he will cry, Jawal, yes sir, and get on with it enthusiastically and efficiently, whatever the situation. Fast forwarding to May of 1944, a bigger operation was planned involving three attacks on separate hilltop positions. Mad Jack led one group up one hill, but only six of them managed to reach the target. At this point, Jack found himself more or less bottled up with the enemy all around and only a few able-bodied men to defend him. So he did what any sensible soldier would have done in the face of certain defeat and possible death. He played on his bagpipes, will ye no come back again this time, until he was knocked unconscious by German grenades and subsequently captured. Churchill was placed in the Sachsenhausen concentration camp after being interrogated. As you might expect, Mad Jack wasn't one to be kept in a prison camp, however. He thus made a run for it that September by sneaking through an old drain under the barbed wire. He and a comrade were recaptured not long after and moved to a camp in Austria. In April of 1945, the Austrian camp's lighting system failed. Churchill took advantage of the opportunity and melted into the darkness, walking away from his work detail. He simply kept walking, and eight days and 150 miles later, he ran into the armored vehicles of the United States Army in Italy. He managed to convince them that he was a British colonel despite his scruffy appearance, and he was returned to safety. But safety wasn't exactly something Mad Jack was after. He was thus disappointed to learn that the war was winding down and that he had missed a year of it. Rather than return home, he got himself assigned to Burma, where the war against Japan was still in full swing. By the time he got over there, though, the bombs had been dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. An unhappy Churchill vented of the end of the war, if it wasn't for those damn Yanks, we could have kept the war going for another 10 years. The end of the war didn't mean the end of Churchill's adventures, though. He decided to train as a parachutist, and when he qualified, he was sent into Palestine as the second command of the 1st Battalion. He later became a land air warfare instructor in Australia. He ended up retiring from the army in 1959 and chose to let death come take him in 1996 in Surrey.